I'm Dave Koz, and this is Driving with Dave. Vincent Ngala. David Stephen. That's right. You like that? Do you know that it's David Stephen with a PH? No, I didn't. I would have said V. You uh, you learned something today. I did. <laughs> and this is I, the first I, time I'm in a Tesla. Really? Yes. What are your thoughts? That's awesome. <laughs> you should try and drive it. Well, yeah. Bye bye. Well, Vincent, Vincent Ngala. If there's if there's one person that I've heard. Uh, from everybody about like yeah. why isn't Vincent on the show? Where's Vincent? <laughs> and this is mostly from Rick Braun's daughter Emma. <laughs> of course. Um, of so course. you know, it's it's about time that you're on our show. Well, so thank you so much. There's a first time for everything, you know. <laughs> thank you for having me on. It is so is it's it's exciting for me personally because I feel like I not just me but I think we all feel like we those of you who are watching that are fans of. Uh, of Vincent's we feel like we we know you and we've known you for a long time and we've watched you grow up like when was the actual first moment when like for example the first day that I met you was in Connecticut it was one of our shows I forget yeah. which tour it was You're right but you opened up the show and I was like I actually was mad at the promoter because <laughs> I said why would you put another saxophone player I play the saxophone why would you it's like redundant and he said just wait and watch this kid so I was, I was with you I would feel the same way believe yeah. me you know and so I, I sat there on the side of the stage and watched your show, and I said, I actually thought about not going on. <laughs> I oh, didn't want to fuck. Well, you were at the hometown. You're from Connecticut. Well, you had the hometown crowd, and you were ha had them eating out of the palm of your hand. So well, what year was that, and how that old was, were you? Um, I was 16 years old. It was 2009, I think. And uh, I still remember that night very vividly. It was a very, very special night. Yeah, and uh, you were actually special. doing your Christmas tour. Oh, was it Christmas? That's I right. think it was like the first reunion of the original cast: uh -huh. Brenda Russell, David Benoit, Peter White, right. Rick, and yourself. And um, it was at the Palace Theater, in Waterbury, Connecticut. And that was exciting too because you never really came to Waterbury. It's always either New Haven or right. Harford. So that was a special night. It was a beautiful I theater that. too. Yes, it was. And your parents were there, and you're pr practically, I think there were actually no Dave Cos fans. There were, the whole place <laughs> was <laughs> Vincent and Gallo oh, fans. I don't know about that. We had to, that we had to fight for, our, uh, for, for that. any attention that night. Well, but it, it was, was the first moment, I think, for me that it really, there was something that clicked in my head. I was like, this is a kid that's got yeah. something very special. And you were not a kid. I mean, that's the thing. You were 16. Well, but I was, you could argue I was a kid, probably, but. Well, you were a kid in your body, but in the music that you were playing and your and your ability yeah. uh, was so completely not that you were yeah. so and you and you you're now 26, so it's 10 years 26. later. I know, I know. That's yeah. what's scary. That's what's scary. So, what do you think? How could you encapsulate the last 10 years for for us? Well, you know, I think so much has happened in a short amount of time. In retrospect, yeah. looking back on it. Mm -hmm. But I never dreamed that I'd see half these places that I've traveled to and met so many incredible people along the way. It's just, you know, it was really like a fairy tale for me. And um, the thing about it is, I just, it was always about the music for me. So I never went into anything with any expectations whatsoever. Mm -hmm. I just, and I think that's good because I think when you, go into something with too high of a expectation sometimes there's you know you're just setting yourself up for disappointment really so I just always stayed true to what I wanted to do and the music I wanted to make and just vicariously somehow things just kind of rolled out but I think know? a lot of the, a lot of it is is due to timing for example oh, no doubt um, no doubt your timing the fact that uh, instrumental music was sort of craving, we, we were in a situation where we really needed somebody, some new artists, some mm -hmm. new energy, some new blood to come on the scene. Right. At the same time, it was a change in the radio format and the way that mm -hmm. records were made and the records were uh, uh, bought and distributed. So you, being a young person, not afraid of technology, you were able to, and it also helps, 
I should say, <laughs> that you have com uh, the complete ability to produce your own music. You're a great producer. You're a great songwriter. You play every well, instrument, which really, by the way, pisses me off terribly. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> over you already because, oh, Vincent, you play drums, you play... And great on all of it. Guitar, drums, keyboards, well, saxophone, you. sing, uh, songwriting, production. Let's so, put it this way. I fake it all really good. Uh, you so, do a very good job. Where did this all. all come from? I mean, I know the answer, but for, for the three people yeah. that watch the show, where, <laughs> <laughs> where does the musicality come from? Well... Why do you... Are, are you so... You're mm. 26 years old, but you're basically... Your musical brain is that of a 66-year-old or a 76-year-old. And I mean that in the most positive sure, way. Sure, sure. In that your knowledge and understanding of music is, is off the charts. Well, you know, at the, the, the forefront of all of that is my father. Now, I'm the only one that plays instruments in my whole family. But my family was very musical in the sense that they were always encouraging music. My father and his brothers loved bands growing up. They used to go see bands. We were always singing and dancing at family parties. But the big takeaway is that my father was a disc jockey. Not radio, he was a mobile DJ. And, you know, he just amassed this huge record collection. That's right, I said records. Mm -hmm. Actual re I could say that I grew up with vinyl. That's right. That's, that's real. I'm proud of that. Well, vinyl has got a resurgence now. It's that's, a renaissance. That's true. Everything comes back full force, you know. But it sounds great. My whole childhood basically consisted of me just flipping through his collection, which by the way, just included everything. Started with doo-wop, 50s, oldies, 60s, Beatles. Then I got into the 70s thing, all the funk, soul, R&B, which is his real favorite, mm -hmm. you know. He always loved horn groups in particular. And, you know, we have our groups like Tower Power, Earth, Wind & Fire, stuff like that. But my father always dug a little deeper with the obscure groups like, you know, Brass Construction, Mandrill, BT Express. Mm -hmm. So, you know, a lot of those bands really formed my influences. So and it's it's one thing to be exposed to that music, and that's a very important mm -hmm. thing, obviously, because your ears were, you know, they, they became big immediately. You know, right. as soon as you were able to start really listening and comprehending music, everything, everything, just but, like a sponge. But turning know? that, the appreciation and understanding music turning that into your own musicality like who was the first person were you the first person to say I want to play an instrument and what was your first instrument my first instrument was the drums believe it or not I got a drum set for Christmas age three or four <laughs> a little baby kit you know <laughs> I eventually just beat the whole thing into uh -huh. smithereens you know, there's nothing left I just smashed yeah. all the skins you know uh -huh. but um, the drums are really important I mean a lot of people start on the piano or something like that where it's you know more note based and they learn theory and chords but for mm -hmm. me it was always a, a rhythm background mm -hmm. you know James Brown always used to say to his band what do you play and they'd say I play guitar he said no you play drums he said keyboard wow. player what do you play he said I play piano he said no you play drums wow. it's kind of the same thing with me everything has a rhythm to it and beat there's like this internal clock with me you know everything is all about the beat and the drums and the rhythm so the drums are still my first love mm -hmm. I, I just it all starts there and then it was kind of like a domino effect because uh, my father did play high school and guitar he, he knew a couple chords and so he kind of taught me the basics to get by and then I took it upon myself to to learn the rest so when did the saxophone come and why did the saxophone come well it came last I was in fifth grade I, I joined the band and we had to pick you know either like a wood, wood woodwind or brass instrument and at the time believe it or not I was really into Louis Prima at the time and Sam Butera. <laughs> so, I'm sorry. What? It's just funny. Like, how old were you at the time in your fifth grade? Ten. Okay, how many probably. ten year olds do you know are into Louis Prima? <laughs> <laughs> You're a strange bird, dude. I, I'm, I'm weird, man. I, I really am. I always kind of went against the grain, you know? I mean, did but, you have friends? Like, what? I mean, of course you had friends sure, growing up, sure. but none of them shared your musical no, interests. No. interests. No way. No way. <laughs> I don't know. It's just so weird. Again, the beat is what got me, the rhythm, mm -hmm. you know, Louis Prima, it was fun music, it, it was feel-good music, and Sam Butera changed my life. Mm -hmm. Sammy was Louis' sax player, and when I heard his tenor saxophone, that was it. I said, oh my God, I said, I need to learn everything I can about this instrument. How could I sound like that? He was, I was almost moved to tears at 10 years old, hearing that horn, and I just said, oh my gosh. But I was devastated, because they handed me an alto in the band. Oh. I was like, 
I don't know if I was too short to play the tenor. It was like as big as I was at the time, right? Or I didn't have the lung capacity. I don't know what it was. But um, So I had to start on the alto for at least two, three years. And it's kind of funny because to this day, I never forgave the alto for <laughs> not allowing me to play the way I wanted to. It just it was just wasn't the sound I had in my head. Yeah, because I've actually I've known you for a long time, ten years now, and yeah. I've never seen you play an alto saxophone. I have one. I like it. I've recorded with it, but it's just you know I was just always trying to hear that tenor <laughs> sound. And I remember when I finally tried a tenor for the first time, I blew like four notes into it, and I I looked at my parents. We were in the kitchen at the time, and I said, "This is the sound I've been looking for." So we all have. I'm mean, a saxophone player myself, and, yeah. and like David Sanborn was my Sam Sam Butera. And of course, I love right. Sam Butera. But I started sure. on alto, and mm -hmm. I was I always, even though I played tenor, I really consider myself an alto saxophonist. Right. And um, we all emulate the people that we that are that are most influential in the sound. Like David Sanborn was my sax god, and still is actually right. to this day. Sure. Um, <clears throat> but somewhere along the way, you diverge, right? You, you're you, like every single person that yes. I know that that is picks up an instrument and has an idol. There's a turning point. Yeah, you right. you emulate your idol, and then you mm -hmm. say you get to a T in the road, mm -hmm. or maybe it's a straight through because some people just continue emulating. But right. you basically said at a certain point, I'm not going to be Sam Butera. I'm mm -hmm. going to be Vincent Fingala. Right. And you have developed, and even though you're so young still in mid twenties. You have developed a sound, which is the most, it's the hardest thing to do, especially in a sea of saxophonists. I know, I know. It How is. would you, for those of people who have not yet discovered your I music, mean, I can't hear it. Other people have, it's, it's hard to it's hear yourself that way, you know what I mean? And you know the funny thing too, Vincent? As many years as we've been knowing each other, you've been coming on our cruises every year. Right. Every year, and then we have a joke, an internal joke about... <laughs> About uh, it's Vincent 1.0, Vincent 2.0. You've graduated to <laughs> Vincent 3.0. Oh, Every year it's another. What am I up to this year? 3.0. 3.0. Wow. Every year. Wow. You you t you don't take just a step or two. You take these huge leaps, oh, musical leaps. Thank you. Thank and you. everything that I've I've given to you as as uh, sort of musical challenges. Say, well, what about this and what about that? And you always say yes, and then you not only deliver wow. but you over deliver. I mean that's that's the thing that I would say most about you is that you're you have incredible musicality. There's no question about what you can do, but well, it's your work ethic, and that's mm -hmm. what I'm going to say thank you to to Leo and Don about your parents, uh, because right. I think that they have instilled in you something that I don't see. I don't see period um, in very few younger generations. Uh, wow. people that kind of work ethic that, that mm. takes it on you have an old soul right. and your work ethic is also old soul <laughs> <laughs> well you know it starts with the family unit mm -hmm. as you know and I owe everything to my parents because they and you're an only kid I'm an only child I'm an only child and they never once discouraged me from following my passion they never forced anything upon me all they did was just encourage me they were there for every step of the way literally and you know, that's so important. It really is. I mean, where would we be without the family unit? And, of course, you were very close with your parents. Yeah. And they supported you. And my parents were both medical people. My dad was a doctor. My mom was a pharmacist. And yet all three kids went in the music business. Wow. And I would think, as Jewish parents, they would, they would have a problem with that. Not only did they have <laughs> no problem with it, they encouraged us to follow our dreams. Right. You know, and, and I think that's, be, that's the reason why... The three of us became successful at our things because instead of parents saying, "Ooh, you better have a plan B," right? You well, know? That's fun and dandy, but you know, you yeah. better start thinking about doing this. Now. Right? No, that wasn't the so case. I agree with you 100. percent And the reason why it worked for us too is because they love music so much too. So we were kind of all in this together. You know what I mean? And um, they they loved seeing the progress. You know, of us, we we just we learned as we went along. You know, it was we. You know, who, who knows about the music business when you get into it? Nobody. Yeah. You just have to put your best uh, step forward and, and make great music, which is what you that's did. It. Um, speaking of which, I did see that there's you, you brought a guitar. It's in the back seat. Do you mind uh, grabbing it? Do you want to? Will you play something for us? Do you want to do something? Well, what do you mean? Well, I've never played in a car before. Can you do something for us? Absolutely. Do you want to do it in the back seat? I'm going to have to. Okay. Wow, this is crazy. Yeah, Let's just do it. Uh, make your way. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try it. Well, this is a first. It just so happens 
Oops. What? Oh my. What? And I have a saxophone too. Did you plan this? No. Did you plan this? Okay, here's the real question is how am I going to drive and play saxophone at the same time? <laughs> I'm not going to do it. I'm going to park. We don't want the cops <clears> coming <throat> after us, do we? I'm parking. Okay. Oh my gosh. Why? Wow. <clears throat> tune her up. You tuned up? I'm going to tune to you. You know, we, we, were, uh, we were talking about Louis Prima before. Yeah. And uh, one of the staples of, in my mind from my memories as a child was uh, Just a Gigolo. <laughs> I mean, uh, we can't not play that song when we talk about Louis Prima, right? So That's what people say when they think of Vincent Tangala. Just a Gigolo. <clears throat> Hopefully not. <laughs> I'm just a Gigolo. Everywhere I go, people know the part I'm playing. Be for every dance. And when he's romance, ooh, what they say. And there will come a day when youth will pass away. What will they say about me when the end comes? I know there's a just to be alone. Life goes on without me. Come on, sing along. I got no nobody. Da, 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 da. Oh yeah!